The procedures described in this video are subject to change and do not alleviate the responsibility of the PIC for safe operations. These procedures do not override ATC instruction. Safety is paramount. Most pilots enjoy the sound of a large aircraft's thunderous roar as it travels down the runway. They find themselves easily distracted and put everything on hold as they watch and listen to yet another aircraft taking off. However, this passion and enthusiasm is not felt by everyone. An unfortunate byproduct of aviation is the noise associated with low altitude maneuvering such as traffic patterns and ground reference maneuvers. Noise abatement procedures exist to limit the amount of noise exposure to these sensitive areas. This video will provide an overview of the minimum altitude requirements and current noise abatement procedures at the local airports and practice areas. The Central Florida area is literally the flight training capital of the world. More flight training occurs within our uh, district than, than any place in the world. We do about 16,000 pilot certifications per year within the North Florida Flight Standards District Office geographical area. As we continue with all of our flight training within the local area, it's important not only to be very concerned with regard to safety and make sure that all our operations are safe and within regulatory compliance, but it's also very important to just be a good neighbor and, and really follow appropriate noise abatement procedures that are prescribed for whatever airport that you're operating in. And we'll find that they're very different you know, some, some airports will have some procedures that are very specific to their airports. Some may be just kind of general procedures. But nonetheless, being familiar with and in full compliance with local noise abatement procedures can go a long, long way towards being a really good neighbor uh, with regard to our total uh, aviation flight training community. The process of, of aircraft noise abatement here at Ormond Beach and as well as I'm sure at any airport is going to be one that's ongoing. The biggest uh, challenge in addressing aircraft noise abatement issues is the, the notion that it's a matter of perception. What one person considers an obtrusive noise, another person does not. Uh, so it's really the challenge uh, that we have to, to continually monitor uh, our procedures and how they're being implemented and maintain uh, good relations with the flight schools and try and work with the flight schools and the other aviation users in the area to make sure that our procedures are getting out there and that they're aware of them and they have whatever information they need to to be aware of the procedures and to follow them as much as possible. The FAA has created a set of minimum safe altitudes when operating an aircraft. FAR 91-119 states that except when necessary for takeoff or landing, no person may operate an aircraft below the following altitudes. At any time, the aircraft must be at an altitude that allows for an emergency landing without undue hazards to persons or property on the surface. Over any congested area of a city or town, the aircraft must remain at the altitude of 1,000 feet above the highest obstacle and maintain a horizontal distance of 2,000 feet from the obstacle. If flying over a non-congested area, an altitude of 500 feet above the surface is sufficient. There are exceptions to fly lower when over open water or sparsely populated areas, as long as the aircraft is 500 feet from any person or obstacle. All ground reference maneuvers should be flown at an altitude of approximately 600 to 1,000 feet AGL. The area chosen should be away from communities, livestock, or groups of people to prevent possible annoyance or hazards to others. There should also be a suitable landing site nearby in the event of an engine failure. Many of the local airports have their own noise abatement procedures. Aircraft departing the Ormond Beach Municipal Airport should climb at their best rate of climb or VY speed, reduce power as soon as practical, departures from the traffic pattern should depart at pattern altitude to the north or the west, Pilots should avoid turning either south or east to limit overflight of the local subdivisions. To be courteous to the residents of Ormond Beach, it is requested that pilots refrain from flight training activities between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. local time. There are also some specific noise-sensitive areas surrounding the Ormond Beach Airport. 
The areas depicted in red are noise-sensitive residential areas. Flight over these areas should be avoided whenever possible. Traffic patterns should be flown tightly at 1,029 feet MSL to minimize noise over the populated areas. When departing from runway 8, turn 10 degrees left on the departure leg as soon as safety permits. This will ensure that the aircraft remains slightly north of the US-1 bridge with the bend in the Tomoka River visible to the right. The turn to crosswind should be made over the marsh. Turning crosswind here will keep the airplane from traveling over noise-sensitive areas. When runway 17 is in use, stay well west of the Tomoka River to avoid the noise-sensitive areas located east of the river. When the tower is closed, runway 17 is a designated runway during calm wind conditions. At the New Smyrna Beach Airport, there are several noise-sensitive areas. To be courteous to these residents, please avoid flying over the residential areas depicted in red whenever possible. This may mean extending legs or delaying turns while in the traffic pattern. In general, maintain VY during climb. Utilize VFR runway markings including the aiming point markings 1,000 feet past the threshold of the runway for the touchdown point during landings. Avoid dragging it in with low altitude and high RPM on extended downwind base and final. During flight training activities, do no more than eight touch and goes in a row without having done a full stop. Flight training should not be performed between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. local time. No flight training operations are authorized on Sundays and national holidays. The majority of noise-sensitive areas near the Dulan Municipal Airport lie south of US-92, the four-lane highway located just south of the airport. Runway 5 is the preferred runway during low wind conditions. Touch and goes are prohibited if there are three or more aircraft in the traffic pattern. When using runway 23, please adhere to the following procedures. When entering the traffic pattern, be sure to avoid the noise-sensitive areas by staying east of the Deland High School. Turn crosswind at 700 feet MSL. Fly the downwind leg over US-92. Avoid flying south of Lake Lindley. In multi-engine airplanes, refrain from simulating engine failures until established on the downwind leg. When departing the traffic pattern, maintain runway heading until reaching 700 feet, then turn to heading 260. While performing closed traffic in Daytona on runway 7 right 25 left, fly the downwind leg over Bevel Road. While the Flagler Airport does not have specific published noise sensitive areas, common courtesy can be used to those living near the airport by avoiding low flight over houses or neighborhoods whenever possible. A noise-sensitive bird farm is located approximately 4 nautical miles northeast of Lake Diston. The bird farm is located next to an area that contains spotty hills that are easily visible from the air. Do not fly below 1,000 feet AGL within 3 nautical miles of the bird farm. There is a pheasant farm located approximately one half mile south of the southeast corner of Lake Ashby. Aircraft must stay at least 1,000 feet MSL within 3 nautical miles of the pheasant farm. Remember that the future of general aviation airports rely upon a positive public perception of airport users. As is always the case, it's the responsibility of the pilot ultimately to, to uh, be aware of, of what they're doing and what needs to be done. And so my advice would be to just try and be aware of uh, the noise abatement procedures and be familiar with the airport and how those procedures might affect the way that that pilot's going to operate at that given airport. Really awareness is, is the key. Uh, if, if people are aware of the, uh, of the uh, procedures, I think uh, there's a much better chance that they'll be able to follow them and, and uh, so that's what I would recommend. Thank you for watching this video. Remember, safety is always the number one priority of the pilot in command. Making sure that you are following the current and correct noise abatement procedures will ensure that you're making a positive impact on the aviation community. Have a safe flight.